thought I'd make a little special video. This is a XTEC EX540. It's not a real high quality meter. I've had this meter for five years now. So the reason I want to show you this meter today is it was just calibrated. So people talk about how much these meters drift and everything with time. So I thought what we could do is just run some comparisons between this meter and my Hewlett Packard 34401. So this meter and the reference have now been on for an hour. And we can see I have a 10 volt signal applied. So let's go ahead and we'll turn on our XTEC EX540. see it drifting right in I don't think it's gonna budge anymore you usually see this thing when you first turn it on it moves down a little bit but after that it pretty much stabilizes so yeah we're within one count easily so let's go ahead and we'll take it to one volt You can see 0.99989 and 1.000. So let's just see if we disconnect the SIM meter. Yep. So there's a little bit of loading that this meter is causing. 0.999973, pretty much one volt. This will be one millivolt. See not a lot of effect there. Let's just try it here. See it's off just a little bit. Let's put it into the millivolt range. Looks pretty good. Let's uh, disconnect our HP meter. Yep, so no effect. But again, we're within one count. So it looks like for DC volts, the meter is pretty much still dead on. So let's go ahead and we'll look at resistance. You can see I've got my test box out. So the first thing we'll do is zero this out. And let's just try 100 ohm resistor. So 100.13 and let's see what it is with our HP meter so we null it out looks very close so 100.112 versus 100.13 I would say the XTEC is actually quite close so with a 1k ohm you can see we're within one count See it moving around a little bit here as I kind of raise my hand over it. So again, we are 0.99999k ohm. So again, I'd say the XTEC EX540 is pretty much dead on. So with a 10k ohm resistor, you can see we are 9.9999k ohms with the HP and 10.007 with the XTEC. Looks like the 100K reads a little high, so it's 100.13. And again, the HP, 100.0017. Still fairly close. So this is with a 1 mega ohm resistor. Let's see on our HP it's 1.00018 meg versus 1.0007 on the XTEC. Still pretty good. This is with a 10 mega ohm resistor. Show it a little bit better there. And again, so we are 10.0026 it looks like on the HP versus 10.007 for the XTEC. 
All right, so I placed both meters in series. You can see I have the X-Tech set to its microamp range, and I've just got them attached to my test box here. Let's start by injecting 100 microamps. So you can see we are 99.3 or so, 99.2 microamps on the HP versus 99.5 on the X-Tech. This is with 10 microamps applied, and you can see we're 10.0 versus 10.02. So to be clear, this frequency counter as well as the generator that's attached to this are both attached to my GPS. Right here you can see one megahertz, and again we're off by a count of two. Right, so here you can see I'm applying 17 megahertz to the XTEC, and you can see it's still off by two counts. So it's a little low on the frequency, but all in all, it's still quite accurate. Alright, let's have a look at the capacitance. So this will be a 0.1 microfarad. And you can see we're reading 100.0. This is at 10 kilohertz. You can see at 1 kilohertz it's reading 101.1. .1. Let's see what our XTEC shows. 101.96 it looks like. So it's pretty good. Let's adjust the frequency down so this will be 120 hertz. So this is a 1 microfarad capacitor. You can see it's 1.0029 and again the RLC meter is reading 100.002 as well so the two meters basically match let's try it with a 10 microfarad Ten point one four five and ten point two one again fairly close. This will be a one hundred microfarad. See 103.21. Versus 100.3. I actually trust this meter over this one. Yeah. But still pretty accurate. Again, being five years old, I don't think this has really moved a whole lot. It's fairly close, so 501.8 degrees on the Bryman. Let's just transfer these over. And what do we get? 498.4. So it looks like it's probably a couple of degrees difference between these two meters at 500 degrees. I don't know what the accuracy of this meter was, but yeah, it looks pretty decent. Again, some not being noted for making real high quality equipment, but as you can see here, this meter's held up quite well over the years. It's not like it doesn't get used. You can see the display is quite scratched. The knob's been broke. I loaned it out, and somebody actually turned it past the dead stop and broke the shaft. Of course, people have blown the fuses in it. You can see how some of the lettering here has been scuffed away. But all in all, you know, for a fairly inexpensive meter, it's been pretty good. Nice thing about this meter is it has all the basic modes, including AC plus DC. Another nice feature with this it has the built-in RF link. And unlike a lot of the meters I looked at that have RF, this one doesn't actually draw a whole lot of power while you're using it. So this only runs on a little 9-volt transistor battery. And even with that RF link enabled, uh, it holds up quite well. So I've been pretty pleased with it. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Till the next meter. Later.